So something that I have been threatening to do ever since I got my mill is to mill up a tree that's very common in my area. Uh, this behind me is a sweet gum tree. Uh, they grow pretty much everywhere here. They're very, uh, very prolific. There's a, they grow pretty much anywhere. They pop up pretty much anywhere. And I have always considered them kind of an invasive species. I don't think they're classified as that, but they're really annoying. And they're not good for a whole lot, it doesn't seem like. Um, they're not very good for firewood because they don't put out a lot of BTUs. Uh, they're not that great as far as lumber goes because uh, what happens is when they dry, the grain, instead of being straight like oak and pine, is cross thatched just like this. It's intertwined together. So what happens is when the tree, when the lumber dries out, it tends to twist and warp and bow. And I have read that it's actually very difficult to get lumber, get good straight lumber out of it. But to be fair, I've never done it myself and I'd like to give it a try. Um, this behind me is a sweet gum tree. Uh, if you can see, there's a smaller tree next to it, which is a hickory tree. And I really like hickory trees a lot. Uh, so we're gonna go ahead and cut this sweet gum tree down and give this hickory tree a little bit of room to grow. Then we're gonna, um, then we're gonna cut up this, uh, this sweet gum tree in maybe eight and a half foot sections and we're gonna skid it to the mill and uh, we're just gonna see what the lumber looks like. So just as a quick side note, I've gotten a couple of comments in my videos about the chainsaw that I use in some of my videos. This is a, a pretty old chainsaw. I don't know what exactly the year is on it, but it's a Husqvarna uh, L65. It is a, a 65cc chainsaw uh, with a 20 inch bar on it and a 404 chain. And it is just an absolute beast. It was made in the days before chain break laws were a thing. So I, so I call it a Widowmaker because it has no chain break on it. And uh, it, it, the safety is, is gonna all be up here, unfortunately. I wish it did have a chain break, but uh, you know, it just teaches you to be a little bit safer, I guess. Um, but this is it. It's a good old saw. It runs like a top and I have never found anything that uh, it and a good sharp chain wouldn't go through. All right, so like I said, I'm gonna do this in real time. I'm not gonna edit this portion of the video and uh, uh, we're gonna see how long it takes me to cut the sweet gum tree down. The wind's blowing pretty bad today. I think that I got the camera windproofed okay, but if it's not, I really apologize for that. Um, but anyhow, let's just get started and see what happens. If all goes well, uh, we're going to put this tree on the ground in this direction. And like I said, the wind is blowing, so uh, I may have to make some pauses between cuts to let that die down before it goes down.
So that pretty well came down in the perfect spot. And you know, even if it had not come down where I wanted it, every time I cut a tree down, I consider it a success if nobody gets hurt. So, uh, so there it is. And I guess it's a good thing that we cut it down because, well, that wind is bad today. I apologize for this wind, y'all. But anyway, as you can see, uh, it's got a little heart rod in it. And uh, so I guess it was ready to come down. It's in a pretty moist, swampy area uh, that gets a ton of water. So uh, that's probably one of the reasons that it was starting to rot from the inside. But uh, anyhow, let's get this log cut up and drag it to the mill and see what's inside of it.
All right, so here is our log, and you know, it's a pretty straight log. It's a nice looking log. Uh, I'm not sure what the dimensions is. I didn't measure it, but judging by that end grain, zoom in on that, see if you can get a good look at it. Um, that looks nice. I mean, that is really pretty. Um, I'm very interested to see what the uh, what the inside of it looks like. Um, all right, so let's uh, let's roll this thing up on the mill and and see what's inside of it.
there you go. Um, I just slabbed it. I didn't. I didn't make a cat out of it or anything like that. I just slabbed it, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to stack it as it is in a uh, in a log pattern or whatever you want to call it with stickers in it. But I am. I've seen pictures of it, but seeing it in person really. Man, look at that. Look at that. Oh my gosh. Look at that. That is amazing. That is. I am shocked. It's like tiger stripes or something. That is some of the prettiest wood I've ever seen. I'm going to try to do something with this. I'm not sure what, but man, this is too pretty to let go to waste. Wow. Let me know in the comments what can be done with this stuff. I was noticing on the first couple of cuts over there, um, you know, when I got through with the cut, the board kind of bowed a little bit on the, on the ends, but it wasn't that bad, and it doesn't seem to be doing too bad now. I'm interested to see what it does once it dries. But yeah, let me know what can be done with this stuff. I know I could probably put it and put some concrete blocks on top of it to help it dry more, more stably, but man, something's got to be done with this stuff. That is like a black, reddish hue. It almost looks like tiger stripes or something. Man, this is, this is a pleasant surprise. Well, anyway, I appreciate y'all watching this video, and I hope you have enjoyed doing it, enjoyed watching it as much as I've enjoyed making it. Um, let me know in the comments what can be done with this, because, uh, because man, this stuff is just way too pretty to to let stand in the forest, <laughs> if you will. That is incredible. Wow. All right, well, I'm going to get this stuff stacked up, and uh, we'll see how it dries out and how it acts, but, but wow, I am, I am just thoroughly shocked at all of this. All right, guys, thanks for watching.